A-L-E-L-S. From the Davis Bonson Air Base in Tucson, Arizona, the Abbott and Costello Program, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes. And that chubby little civilian who, when he reported to the commanding officer, uttered these historic words. Costello, where have you been? Just look at you. Your face is smeared with lipstick. From your eyebrows to your chin. Yeah, I know that, Abbott. That's the last time I'll ever kiss a whack in a Jeep with the motor running. <laughs> <laughs> look, I missed you on the train coming out from Hollywood. Costello, where were you? Abbott, I had a very rough trip. You did? I, I had to stand up all the way. Everybody had a place to sleep but me. There was even an army dog sleeping in an upper berth. A dog in an upper berth? Yeah. Why didn't you complain to the conductor? I did. I said, conductor, there's an army dog in the upper berth, and I can't understand it. And what did he say? He says, I can't understand it either. He paid for a lower. I know. <laughs> never mind that. Look. So he got a drawing room. All right, never mind. Look, what is that outfit you're wearing? Oh, I'm supposed to be a cowboy, Abbott. You do? How do you like my four-gallon hat? That, Costello, don't you mean a ten-gallon hat? Nope, four gallons. All I had was an eight-ticket. <laughs> Well, if you're supposed to be a cowboy, where are your shaps? What did you say? The shaps, the shaps. Where are the shaps? I don't know where the shaps are now, but brother, they ain't on Iwo Jima. <laughs> Costello, I didn't think it was possible for you to get so dumb. Oh, I can do anything if I set my mind to it. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Why, this morning, I went back horse riding. Yeah, you went what? Horse back riding. Oh, how, how could you ride a horse? You're a tenderfoot. Tenderfoot? Brother, you got your geography all wrong. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> what kind of a horse did you ride? It's tender. Hey, wait a minute, I understand that. Uh, explain it to me. What kind of a horse did you ride? Did you have a uh, Mustang? No, I used to have a Mustang habit, but I shaved it off. I, uh... <laughs> Made my girlfriend very jealous. What do you mean? It was bigger than hers. Uh, no, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, listen, you nitwit. I'm talking about a Mustang, not a mustache. You ride on a Mustang, but you, you can't ride on a mustache. Well, you could ride on mine. It had handlebars. Uh, <laughs> Costello, I don't believe you can ride at all. Oh, yes, I can. Uh, can you make your horse do a canter? No, but I made him do a jolson. He got down on one knee and he sang Mammy. He did? Mammy! Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Just a minute, Costello. Are you trying to tell me your horse sang Mammy? Well, he didn't sing it all the way through. He whistled the last chorus. Okay. <laughs> Look, Costello, that's impossible. How can a horse whistle? I put my fingers in his mouth. Uh, 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 and he whistled? No, he bit me. He, he bit you? <laughs> then I whistled. Yeah, then you whistled. Never mind that. Look, what do you feed your horse? Well, this morning I give him a bucket of whiskey. A bucket of whiskey? Yep. I, I, I felt very sorry for him, Abbott. What do you mean? The man that rented him to me told me he's got to go back on the wagon tomorrow. Uh, you... <laughs> Look, you idiot. The man rented you a dray horse. He is not a dray horse. He's a brown horse with white stripes. Uh, uh, no, 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 Costello. I'm not talking about the horse's color. He didn't have any color. He only wears the collar when he pulls the wagon. No, well, look... If, if he pulls a wagon, he's a dray horse. He has to be a dray horse to pull a wagon. Now, how do you like that? This guy wants to put all the other horses out of work. All the black horses, the white horses, all the brown horses. They will have no jobs at all. Nothing but dray horses pulling the wagon. No, no, no. Calm down, Costello. I'm only trying to tell you that if he pulls a wagon, he's a dray horse. A dray horse works on a dray. Abbott, this work, horse works overtime. He pulls the wagon in the dray time, and I ride him at night. I'm paying time and a half. <laughs> Look, you dummy, when I say he's a dray horse, I don't mean he's a day horse. I mean he's a dray horse. Now, a dray horse can work in the day or at night and still be a dray horse. He can work at night on the dray. Oh, when you say he's a dray horse, you don't mean he's a dray horse. You mean he's a dray horse and a dray horse can still be a dray horse when he works night or day. Now, you've got it. Now, I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Then let's forget all about it. We'll, we'll see what you know about horses. What page are you on, Abbott? Uh, number four. Uh, so am I. I. So am I. <laughs> I'll find out what you know about horses in just a minute. 
Uh, do you prefer an eastern saddle or a western saddle? Well, I don't know where it comes from, but I like it. I drink a big glass of saddle every morning. Yeah, you dummy, what kind of saddle can you put in a glass? Saddle a paddocket. Uh, no. <laughs> Costello, you'll never be a cowboy. Why, you haven't even got a lasso. A what? I said lasso. A lasso is a rope or a coil. Oh, I got very pretty coils. My mother coils my coil every morning. Right on my forehead, I got a spit coil. No, 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 Costello. The coil I mean is a line that hangs on the saddle. The cowboys use it to catch horses and cows. And... They catch horses and cows? Sure. They catch horses uh, and horses on a line? Uh, certainly. What do they use for bait? Hey, uh, Costello, look, let's, let's forget the whole thing. Now, while you're here in Arizona, why don't you take advantage of the beauties of the desert? I tried that this morning, Abbott, and one of them slapped me right in the puss. I... <laughs> I'm not talking about girls. I mean the beauties of nature. You, you should go see the Grand Canyon. That Grand Canyon is a fake. Uh, what do you mean the Grand Canyon is a fake? I went out there to look at it yesterday. There's nothing there but a big hole. <laughs> they must have moved to someplace else. Costello. I don't see nothing. That hole is the canyon. And I am going to visit the Grand Canyon tomorrow. I am going right up to the edge of the canyon. You're going right, right up, up to the, the edge. edge of the canyon? That's me. Abbott, be careful you don't fall off. But if you do fall, be sure and look to the left. Why? You'll never see a sight like that again, brother. <laughs> Last year, Camel broke its own record, made more cigarettes than ever before in history. Now, a new production schedule topping even 1944 is planned for this year. And still, we can't promise to meet the civilian demand. Billions and billions of camels are going to the servicemen overseas. And the service comes first. But when you do get camels, they are still camels. Rich, full flavor, cool mildness. Camels will not be sold down the river. They just wouldn't be camels if we were to use green, insufficiently cured tobaccos. War or peace... Camels are still camels. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, still the cigarette of costlier tobaccos. Ask for them every time you buy cigarettes. Camel presents Freddie Rich's band with a hit song from Bloomer Girl, Evelina. Costello, isn't, isn't it wonderful to be playing to this fine bunch of clean-living boys? What did you say they were? Uh, they're clean-living boys. Clean-living boys? Yeah. Well, a guy can't get very dirty on $50 a month. Hey, look. <laughs> well, look, wasn't your uh, cousin Private Hugo Costello stationed at this base? Yeah, but they threw him out. He kicked an MP in the shins. You can't go around kicking MPs in the shins. You can't kick them any place. They're particular. Yeah. <laughs> Look, will you talk sense, Costello? Did you meet any Indians on the desert? 
Oh, sure. You know me. I'm an old Indian fighter. Yeah. Fighter? Yeah. Well, why aren't you fighting? I can't find any old Indians. <laughs> They're uh, all young. Uh, me Indian. Me sell moccasins. Me sitting bull. If you're sitting bull, why are you standing up? <laughs> me on vacation. Uh, Mr. Bull, I'll take a pair of those moccasins for Costello. Ah, uh, good. Here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. These moccasins are kind of small. Ain't you got a size 10? Say, what am I, Florsheim? I'm only an Indian. <laughs> hey, Abbott. Go on. You know what? My what? Uncle Artie Stebbins married an Indian girl, but he had a divorce her. Why? She used to walk in her sleep and she took the blanket with her. <laughs> Costello. <laughs> Costello, I understand you're thinking of building a house out here on the desert. Yes. I was talking to an artichoke about the house this morning. Uh, <laughs> I think you mean architect. An artichoke is an expensive delicacy. Well, there's nothing cheap about this crumb. Uh, look. <laughs> look, before you start building a house, I think you should see a model home. Okay, get me a model. I'll see her home. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't talk silly, Costello. Now, I've taken the liberty of growing up some plans for your house. And here they are. Now, uh, you'll notice I have placed your room here. The kitchen, uh, here. And the maid's room, here. I like that, Abbott. Why? I'll have to go through the kitchen to get to the maid's room. Now, <laughs> now, never mind that. Have you made arrangements to get the money to build your house? Oh, sure. I'm getting the money from the... We trust you, but if you cheat us, you won't have any luck-friendly credit finance company. <laughs> what security did you have to give to get the loan? Oh, nothing. I just gave them my word. And my mother has to go and live with them. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Ah, uh, good evening, gentlemen. I'm from the Friendly Credit Finance Company. My name is Ock. Tommy Ock. I think before I spoke to your brother, Mohawk. <laughs> and of course, I think so too. Now, Mr. Costelli, our company makes a practice of examining all applicants for loans. A mere formality, if I'm not too inquisitive. We have absolute faith and confidence in your honesty. See that, Abbott? They trust me. Now... Mr. Costello, please be so kindly and press your fingerprints on this pad. I'll check with Washington later after we take a sample of your blood. You're going to take my blood? Oh, just a couple of quarts. We'll return it after the loan is paid up. Now, do you having any birthmarks? No, but I got my girl's face tattooed on my chest. Are there any birthmarks on that? Well, there's a mole there, but I don't know if it belongs on her chin or my chest. <laughs> Well, this is very enlightening. Wait, will, will, will you give me that again, please? I say what you're saying to me is very enlightening. What do you talk with, lumps? Thank you. Now, tell me this. What does the face looking like? Well, she's got dark, curly hair. And every time I take a deep breath, she smiles. I see. Now, Mr. Costello, have you any marks of uh, identification... On your body, like uh, scarses, woundses, or bruises. Noses. <laughs> well, if you happen to miss any of your payments, we'll attend to that. Hey, Abbott, what do you mean by that last crack? Oh, nothing, Costello. That's merely a matter of form. That's what I'm uh, worried about, my form. I want to keep it the way it is. <laughs> now, Mr. Costello, in going over your plans, we find that your building thing is costing too many monies. We'll have to cut down. Cut down. All I want is a living room, a bedroom, a dining room, kitchen, and a maid's room and a garage. I see. Well, in the first place, you don't need any dining room. Oh, now, wait a minute. Just a minute. If you take away the dining room, where, where in the world is the man going to eat? Well, the way this thing is going, I don't think I'm going to have an appetite. <laughs> exactly. You cannot expect to eat and make payments, too. Okay, the dining room is out. Gee, but that was a pretty room. Such beautiful wallpaper. Yes. Now then, if you are not going to eat, you will not need a kitchen. And without a kitten, you won't need any maid's room, is it? I'm going to miss that maid. <laughs> yes, the maid. That's, that's very refreshing. <laughs> Will you cut it out with that? <laughs> now read straight. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the way I talk in heaven. <laughs> Let us get back to the house, please. Right here. That's the bedroom. Well, you can cut that out, too. I'll be so worried about the payments, I won't be able to sleep. 
Absolutely. Oh, say, incidental, what is this thing here? Oh, that's the living room. Well, now, what do you want with a living room? You have no bedroom, no kitchen, and no dining room. Are you calling that living? All right, so we'll cut out the living room. <laughs> now, what have I got left? Well, you've got a lovely piece of ground there, Mr. Costello. Good, I can park there and live in my car. Oh, no, I'm afraid you couldn't do that, Mr. Costello. And why not? We take your car today for the down payment. Uh, toodaloo. Hey, Abbott, you know I really outsmarted that guy? How did you outsmart him? I gave him a $500 deposit, and I ain't gonna show up with the balance. <laughs> For camel fans tonight, lovely Connie Haynes sings The Sunny Side of the Street. <laughs> coat and get your hair leave your worries on the doorstep just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street can't you hear a pit of pain and that happy tune is your step life could be so on the sunny side of the street I used to walk in the shade With those blues on red But I'm not afraid This rover crossed over If I never have a say I'll be rich as Rockefeller Dust at my feet On the sunny side of the street I used to walk Walk in the shade With those blues on gray But I'm not afraid This rover Yeah, I crossed over if I never have a say, I'll be rich as Rockefeller. Oh, dust at my feet on the sunny, sunny side of the street. Compare used to be one of my favorite words. I'd stand up here and ask you to compare camels with other cigarettes. The mildness, the mellowness, the rich, full flavor. Well, some of you did and some of you didn't. But a lot of people lately have been having to compare camels with other cigarettes, whether they wanted to or not, what with this shortage. And as someone said the other day, I've been smoking camels for years, but I've just really found out what an incomparably swell cigarette it is. I've tried a lot of brands. But it's camels for me every time, whenever I can get them. And whenever you do get camels, they are still getting camels. No green, insufficiently cured tobaccos. But the costlier tobaccos, properly aged and cured, and blended in the traditional camel way. So be sure to keep on asking for camels every time you buy cigarettes. C-A-M-E-L-F Camels. War or peace, camels are still camels. Costello, how do you like this bunch of airmen here at Davis Monson Air Base? Abbott, they're wonderful. No, I and thought so you said polite. That. Mm -hmm. I walked all through the camp with Connie Haynes and that one guy whistled at her. Uh, 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 I don't believe that. Well, you can ask Colonel Northstein. He was with us. Oh. <laughs> I thought so. And another thing, Abbott, these guys don't pay no attention to the 12 o'clock curfew. They break it all the time. They do? Yeah. Curfew or no curfew, they go to bed at 10 o'clock. Right. <laughs> found that out, too, eh? Yeah. And I also found out why, why they called those guys Buck Privates. You did? Yep. I was out with five of them last night. There wasn't a buck between them. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're certainly learning a lot about the Army. Uh, tell me, 
Do you know what the highest rank is? Yeah, private, first class. PFC is not the highest rank. Well, it's as high as you can go and still have friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, talk sense, Costello. By the way, didn't your girlfriend, uh, Ruby Poolcue, join some branch of the service? Yeah, but Ruby is a sailor. Uh, I, I think you mean she's a wave. No, Ruby's a sailor. She's on a boat. Costello, that's impossible. They don't allow women on those boats. Suppose somebody should find out. Who's going to tell? I... <laughs> Costello, you're a dope. I'm a dope? Yes. Hey, Abbott, why don't your wife go in the army? What would my wife do in the army? She could teach the commandos to fight dirty. I, 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 I. <laughs> Never mind that. Uh, who was that girl I saw you with in Phoenix yesterday? That was Tessie Tinfoil, telephone operator at the hotel. I had a date with her. Tessie Tinfoil? Yep. That dizzy blonde? Mm -hmm. she, she isn't all there. There's enough of her there to have a date with. <laughs> Where did you take her? Where did I take her? I took her over here to, to the Davis Mountain Air Base. And two rear gunners took a shot at Tessie. How did that happen? Well, she's got so many circles under her eyes, they thought she was a target. <laughs> uh, pardon me, sir. May I use your microphone to send a, bra a message? Go right ahead, Lieutenant. Go ahead. Uh, calling Mrs. Wilbur Fuzz. Mrs. Fuzz, your husband, Private Fuzz, spent a very restful night. He slept like a baby. That is all. Hey, who is Private Fuzz? He's our ninth century. <laughs> <laughs> You know we was doing good up till then? Yeah, I... <laughs> Look, uh, never mind him. Costello, how do you like this air base? All kidding aside. I think it's okay. Really wonderful. But one of the G.I.s told me it would be much better if they'd cut out all that working and drilling between meals. Now, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Costello, suppose they should accept you in this outfit. Which front would you like to do your fighting on? Florida. But there's no fighting in Florida. You're telling me. I... <laughs> It wouldn't hurt you to go into training. You'd lose a lot of weight on your basic. I bet my stomach would get thinner, too. They are. Uh... I know one thing, Abbott. I'd like the Air Force. You would? I can just close my eyes, and I could picture my first day in camp. <laughs> Sorry, Private Costello, I didn't realize... Oh, so it's you, eh, Sergeant? Yes, I know it's kind of early, but if you don't mind, the, the Colonel wants to know if he could have a word with you. Oh, the Colonel, the Colonel. I got other things to do. <laughs> okay, send the Colonel in. <laughs> Private Costello. At ease, Colonel. <laughs> you to report to hangar number one. We need a man to change an engine. Hey, you giving orders to me? Yes. Who are you? Of course. Don't forget, I'm a colonel. How much money do you make? Five hundred dollars a month. Well, look, kid, you got a good job. Now, don't louse it up. <laughs> well, Private Costello... Private, I, I think the colonel is mad at you. Now, I'll tell you what let's do. You carry this bomb site over to headquarters so I can tell him you worked hard today. Maybe he'll forgive you. You want me to carry the bomb site, eh? Okay, Sergeant, give me the bomb site. Now, be careful with it, Private Costello. It costs $10,000. <laughs> Whoops, I dropped it. <laughs> oh, Butterfingers! Watch your language, Sergeant. I don't like it now. There may be an NP in the joint. Go oh, now, Private. Shame on you. I'm quiet, it. quiet. I'm surprised at you. Shut up. I'm... Shut up. Uh... Talk to me in a civilian tongue. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but this may cost you your chance for promotion, Private Costello. You may never get to be a corporal. I don't want the job anyway. Too much responsibility. Besides my cousin Hugo, he started in the army as a corporal. Oh, that's impossible. How could he start as a corporal? Well, Hugo was born with two stripes on him. <laughs> now, blow out of here, Sergeant. Get out. I'm busy. Go on, scat. Good morning, Private Costello. I said get out. 
Hello, come in. Morning. And who are you? I'm the Colonel's daughter. What a spot for a traveling salesman. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet you. How's your old man? Why, he's just fine. He was so excited when he found out you all was assigned here. He just loves comical fellas. Well, I'm glad to hear the Colonel likes me. And you're a pretty sweet kid yourself. Tell your old man I'll put in a good word for him with the draft board. <laughs> I just got an offer from the Navy, you know. Oh. I'll take him Daddy. along with me. Private Costello. And Daddy says to tell you that if you all live through the basic training, he's going to see to it personally that you all get right into the thick of the fighting right away. Ah, kid, he don't have to do that. I mean, I've... Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Where do you think he'll send me? I don't know exactly, but he did mention Tokyo. Tokyo? Are you kidding I'm liable to get hurt over there. <laughs> They're double crosses. They're using real bullets. Oh, you don't have to worry, Private Costello. Daddy says the minute you land in Japan, he's going to declare you an open city. <laughs> oh, thanks, honey child. Thanks. You know, I know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen, them Japs don't live up to no rules of war. They don't recognize no open city. I'm liable to be bombed. That's what Daddy thinks, too. Goodbye. Hey, you. Hey, aren't you Private Costello? Yeah, that's me. Well, I'm an MP, and you haven't reported for duty in 15 days. Well, what are you gonna do about it? Oh, nothing. We just missed you, that's all. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Costello. Wake up. Wake up. What's the matter, Rabbit? Costello. Costello, come here. What? Your blood test just came back. You've been turned down again. By the Air Force? No, by the Red Cross. <laughs> they sent your blood back with this note. Here, go ahead and read it. Okay. Dear Mr. Costello, we are returning your blood. We need plasma, not asthma. <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Platoon Sergeant Ernest I. Thomas of Tallahassee, Florida, and the United States Marines. Sergeant Thomas took over the command of his platoon when the commanding officer was wounded and was the first American to plant the stars and stripes on top of Mount Suribachi on Iwo Jima. In your honor, Sergeant Thomas, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 400,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the three camel radio shows honors the Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week. I rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are fighting, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore, Bundy to Bob Hawk, in Thanks to the Yanks. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Costello, they certainly have been nice to us down here at Davis Monthon Field. And, and I want to thank Colonel uh, Nofstein and, and Special Service and Public Relations staff. Yes, and Abbott... I got some good news for all the guys. Yeah? The war's going to be over in two weeks. Oh, Costello, how do you know the war's going to be over in two weeks? Because my uncle Artie Stebbins joined the Air Force this morning, and he never held a job over two weeks in his life. Oh, well, good night, folks. Good night. Good night, Ted. Yes, folks, be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camel's mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you.